Happy Sabbath, brothers and sisters. Good morning. At least good morning from, from this area. Good afternoon from other areas. As we return into our study in Zechariah 4, let us ask our Heavenly Father for his guidance and for his blessing. Let us ask that our minds be open so that we may consider the points that he would have us to understand. So that this has an impact upon us and helps us to more directly see a character that is formed in the similitude of that of Christ. Shall we pray? Loving Father in heaven, we thank you for these Sabbath hours. We thank you and we praise you, Father, for the blessings that you have been providing through this week. But we thank you most of all for this time that we may spend and assemble together to open your word, to be guided by your spirit, to come into a closer relationship with you. Direct us now. <clears throat> Help us each one. May your will be done. On earth, in our lives, as it is in heaven. We thank you for this bread that you are providing us this bread from heaven, and we ask, Father, for your direction now that you show us what you would have us to do, what you would desire for us to consider. We ask, Father, for your guidance and direction upon those that are ill. We ask as well, Father, for your blessing upon this study and for all that have assembled for this and for those that will see you this study later. Help us now so we may be prepared for your spirit. Guide us and direct us. May your angels attend us. Help us now, Father. For this is our prayer. For this we praise you, for this we thank you for hearing and answering this prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay. Now. During this study, it is possible I may receive a telephone call. I was advised this last evening that a friend of mine who has studied a bit within this message was air flighted to the University of Kentucky Hospital for a cardiac issue. And I may wind up getting a telephone call from his wife. That would be the only interruption that I would have this time. Now, from the outset of this, of this study, we have been going through the book of Zechariah, the last of the minor prophets that we are considering. We are in the point in the book of Zechariah where we are considering the example, the figure that we have been presented of the golden oil that flows from two olive trees. From the study that we had this last week, what is this golden oil? The Holy Spirit. Okay. Now, it is the Holy Spirit. What is the responsibility and the job of the Holy Spirit? Convict. Convict of sin, righteousness, and judgment. Exactly. 
So now we're adding an additional dimension to this with the Holy Spirit. Now we're going to recap just a little bit and then go on to several other new passages from the Spirit of Prophecy. Now, as you see before you, from this time, believe that the Lord can do all things. Are we to believe that man can do all things? What is this statement telling us? That the Lord can do all things. That he can make you a consistent Christian who wears the beauty of his heavenly character in the home life. A loving, lovable Christian is the most powerful argument in the favor of the truth. <clears throat> When we wear the mask of Christianity only when we are in church and we are a totally different person in the home, are we in vain presenting the name of Christ? Yes, we are. Yes, we are. So if we're in vain presenting the name of Christ, are we breaking one of the commandments? Indeed. Okay. If in vain we take the name of Christ, are we loving our Savior? No. Here, Mrs. White again stated, have your heart saturated with the holy oil that is emptied from the two olive trees. What does it mean for something to be saturated? So it's going to be dissolved. If we, if we saturate a cloth, is that cloth dry or is that cloth so wet that what it has been dipped in falls all over yes yeah, so wet we want that oil emptied from the olive trees into our hearts occasionally or does she say every day Every day. Now, if we're to have this in our hearts every day, that does not allow us to have one character for Sabbath and another for the rest of the week. We need every day to be receiving this instruction from the Holy Spirit. We want that oil emptied in from the olive trees into our hearts every day. Then our tongues will speak forth the praise of our God, looking to Jesus, catching the light of his countenance, the light of his righteousness, we can turn deformity and sullenness and our many words of speech into sound words, and our deformity of character will be removed. Is this not righteousness by faith? Yes. Okay. Yes. Now, we're going to jump a little bit further down. 
Satan is moving with intensity from beneath and is bringing all of his forces to bear to unsettle those who have once been established in the truth. <clears throat> Satan is mounting his final attacks. These are the very ones who, by yielding up the truth which they have once advocated, can do the greatest harm to the cause of God. Quite a large number will enter this path because the truth they once believed had not been brought into their life practice. But those who depart from the faith and refuse to give the last message of warning to the world will walk in paths in which the Lord does not lead. Satan goes before them, clothed as an angel of light. They will follow on in false paths until they shall discern what is comprehended in the wrath of the Lamb. What is this message? What is this last message of warning to the world? What do we call it? The three angels' messages. Exactly. Here Mrs. White is telling us that there will be those that have been within the movement, that have been being prepared by the messages of the first and the second angel that are going to be tested, but they are going to leave the path. They are going to leave the platform of truth. If they're following on in these false paths, are these those parties that have been praying in the most holy place? Or are they the ones that have been praying and remained in the holy place? Those that remain in the hurry, please. Okay. Now, here we again begin talking about the golden oil. This oil the wise virgins had in their vessels with their lamps. This oil is the Holy Spirit, which the foolish virgins did not have. Character is not transferable. All of the virgins were asleep. Some were prepared with additional oil. Some were not. This oil was accepting of the Holy Spirit. Can the Holy Spirit live where there is any sin? Mrs. White would say the Holy Spirit cannot live where there is one spot or one wrinkle. Can the Holy Spirit abide where there is any sin. No. When, as in the case of the foolish virgins, they find their lamps going or gone out, faith and love and knowledge of God and the truth have left them as water leaves a leaky vessel. How much does Mrs. White tell us that we are to study the parable of the ten virgins? How much are we gleaning from this presentation of Zechariah? Over these last weeks, we have been finding many things in the morning studies that are telling us that these studies are so necessary for us on an ongoing basis.
<clears throat> now, Mrs. White continues. We may have this holy oil. We must have it. It must be emptied from the holy olive trees, the two anointed ones that are commissioned to empty the oil from themselves and communicate it to the churches. But those who choose to follow the impulses of their own natural temperament will find themselves without the holy oil. Is this the condition we want ourselves to be found in today? The next statement is very simple. Dear children, watch under prayer. Okay, now in the comment from the chat, it says that this passage so noted describes the third angel's message on our hearts. So what what passage is this, please? Oh, I was referring to Hosea 6, 1 through 3. It says, come and let us return unto the Lord, for he has torn and he will heal us. And that's the Holy Spirit's work, convict us of sin and help us to repent. He hath smitten us and he will bind us up. After two days, will he revive us? And the third day, he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Then okay. shall ye know, we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is repaired as the morning, so it's progressive. He shall come unto us as the rain and as the latter and former rain onto the earth. So I think that's the 3 a.m. right there. <clears throat> okay, then now a question is being asked. How does the Holy Spirit live within us sinners in spite of the fact that the Holy Spirit does not abide in unclean vessels. How can we respond to this? We need to ask God to purify our hearts, and we need to really make a make a great effort to follow in His with His guidance. Just follow Him okay. and do His will, rather than our own. Now. <clears throat> This has been a long week with a lot of work that I had not anticipated. One evening, I wound up at a church at the time that they were about to have a, a prayer meeting. Now, the prayer meeting was attended primarily by ladies. I was the only man that was there. Now, at this prayer meeting, there were those that had been very critical of different things that had been going on within the church. There were those that had been doing quite a bit of backbiting, that had been doing a lot of criticism behind the scenes. Yet, during this prayer meeting, they are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Now, our question that we're seeking to answer, how does the Holy Spirit live within us sinners when the Holy Spirit cannot abide in unclean vessels. The Holy Spirit can only go where a heart is willing to receive it. Whose choice is it to receive the Holy Spirit? It's for me as a question. So are we safe in saying that it is our choice whether or not we're going to receive the Holy Spirit? Mm. 
<clears throat> yes, that's He's... what Revelation 20 is all about, right? Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If we don't allow him in entrance, we're we're hopeless. Would we agree with all that? Yes, I agree. Okay. Dear children, watch unto prayer. Then you will know that you do know that your life is hid with Christ in God. Those who live in these last days are to be overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. There is no time now for levity, for self-indulgence, and for and stupidity in the understanding of the work that we have to do. Activity and devotion are united. Work and piety blend. Mm -hmm. There is to be appropriate strength given for daily duties, which is derived from the worshiping of God in the beauty of holiness. The lamp must burn, which is impossible unless it is fed with the holy oil. Mm. Now, if the lamp must burn, is this a light of our own kindling or is this light from the altars above? A light from the altars above. So if that light is is burning then that wick is being fed with the holy oil does that agree with what we're studying I've not got you you don't understand me yeah maybe you can repeat your question Okay. If the lamp is burning, where is the light? Where where is the the fuel coming from? Where is the oil coming from? Is this something that we are providing, or is this being provided from heaven? It's provided from heaven. Now she continued to say, and the oil which is so precious <clears throat> is efficacious or effective only as it is communicated by reflecting light upon the pathway of others. If we stand and we are being critical of others, if we are choosing to reflect the character of the adversary and not of Christ, will our lamps burn from the holy oil? Not at all. Busy activity is to be proportioned with devotional exercises in worship and diligent cheerful ministry to the needy souls who inquiry is, what must I do to be saved? Now, <clears throat> the object of all ministry is to keep self out of sight and to let Christ appear. The exaltation of Christ is the great truth that all who labor in word and doctrine are to reveal. At our late meeting, men and women have been stirred. Thoughts that are strange and new have taken possession of human minds. Men are musing in their hearts. Are not these words sensible and true? Every thought of this kind is the result of the Holy Spirit's working on the human mind. In the morning studies, have these studies been producing concepts and words 
that are sensible and true. Yes. What would you say? Yes, they have been they have been given us since we are they have been sensible and true. Okay. If the advocates of these new themes and doctrines are sustained by the word, if their spirit and actions make them witnesses for God, if the truth light shines through them in a in clear bright beams, if they reveal a patient, kind, forbearing spirit. The efforts made by the adversaries of truth, as in Christ's day, will be powerless. If these misapply truth, as they surely will. If they misinterpret and rest the scriptures in order to sustain error. If they make personal threats, that they may stir your passions to retaliate. As they certainly will do, keep your words pure and calm. Remember that Jesus is by your side to help you reveal his spirit and not your own natural temperament. Amen. Brothers and sisters, are these my words or are these the words of the prophet? Was from the prophet. Go ahead. Are they reveals like that past week, like a pastoral, as it has well explained, there are these struggles that have been passing through, but I thank God that, that the week got over, then we are in another week, we're going to start another week, and I pray that God leads me all, all in all. But patience, calmness, yeah. Now, here's our situation. There are many things that we are studying. There are many concepts that we are bringing forward because they are to help us in the refinement of our characters. There are going to be those that will attack. There are going to be those that are going to want to set aside things. But if the concepts of these themes and doctrine are sustained by the word, if they are helping make men and women witnesses for God, Additional lights are going to come up. You are God's delegated messenger. You are to act in his place. Then represent Christ and not your individual rash temperament. Angels of God are close beside you and they will keep you in peace. And will give you words to speak, which will be as a sweet odor. This will show you that you have the spirit of Christ and of truth. It is not by your show of knowledge or, or of superior talent or philosophy that you reveal Christ, but by keeping your own soul emptied of your natural self. <clears throat> if we are going to represent Christ. Are we then taking on the name of Christ in vain? Uh, there are two hymns that come to mind. Uh, Take my life and let it be. There's another one whose title I forget. Live out thy life within me, O Jesus, King of Kings. Okay. Now. Um, so the study last night, of course, relates directly to what we're doing here. I know. 
So with all of this, we give reference again to Zechariah 4, verses 11 to 14. And as we note from verse 14, we are told that these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Where else do we find two anointed ones that stand by the Lord? Consider and think. We're going to see this become clear. Praise God, brother. We see from the church, we, we see from the chat, it says, those words are answering my prayer from the past week for real. For this we praise God, for this we should thank God. Now, these two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth, Mrs. White states, these empty themselves into golden bowls, which represent the hearts of the living messengers of God, who bear the word of the Lord to the people in warnings and entreaties. Is your heart today a golden bowl? Is your heart of pure gold? Has your heart been refined in the heavenly fire? The word must be as represented, the golden oil, emptied from the two olive trees that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. This is the baptism by the Holy Spirit with fire. This will open the soul of unbelievers to conviction. The wants of the soul can be met only by the working of the Holy Spirit of God. Man can of himself do nothing to satisfy the longings and meet the aspirations of the heart. How many of us today are willing to undergo that baptism of fire? By the grace of God. Amen. Now the next point from the chat says, Moses and Elijah stood with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. The living and the dead in Christ are represented by them. I don't disagree with that. Yet, here is a figure for us. We have two olive trees through several pipes that are emptying the golden oil into golden bowls. The golden bowls are, are being represented as being the hearts of those that are undergoing or have undergone the baptism by the Holy Spirit with fire. Consider that, especially when we are considering that Christ is our refiner of gold and silver. We need not think that because we are only a tiny light, we need not be particular about shining. The great value of our light lies in consistency in shining and the moral darkness of the world. In shining not to please and glorify ourselves, but to honor God with all there is of us. If we are doing service for God and our work is corresponding with the ability God has given us, that is all that he expects of us. Are we willing to do that which God expects of us? 
Next again, <clears throat> she quotes Zechariah 4, 1 to 6 and 11 to 14. We know that the lamps which give us light have no light in themselves. They cannot fill themselves. So the holy appointed ones must empty the golden oil into the golden tubes. And the heavenly fire, when applied, makes them burning and shining lights. Our hearts cannot reflect light until there is a vital connection with heaven. Many are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit without being willing to undergo the purification of fire. Now, what happens to the impure, to the impurities that are found within the gold and the silver when fire is applied? They're burned off. Have you ever thought that those that are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit without being personally prepared are actually praying for their own destruction? It's a shocking uh, concept, but it's true. I mean, the Holy Spirit comes to us, convicts us of sin, and if we don't repent, then the Holy Spirit will eventually leave us to our own destruction. We have to consider that we cannot reflect any light until there is a vital ongoing, daily, hour by hour, minute by minute, connection with heaven, which is vital. This alone can make them burn steadily with holy, unselfish love for Jesus and for all who are the purchase of his blood. And unless we are constantly replenished with the golden oil, the flame will die out Unless the love of God is an abiding principle in our hearts, our light will go out. Artwork will reveal itself in actions. Those who appreciate truth and righteousness will show by their zeal, by their efforts to give the light to others. Paul said to Timothy, take heed to thyself and to thy doctrine. 1 Timothy 4, 16. Those who are chosen vessels must reflect the character of Christ. Through these, the grace of Christ flows in rich, pure streams from the river of the water of life, enabling them to bless all with whom they come in contact. Are we being this kind of blessing today? Golden instruction is given us in the fourth chapter of Zechariah. The angel that talked with me, the prophet writes, came again and waked me as a man wakened out of his sleep. As a virgin wakened out of their sleep and said unto me, what seest thou? And I said, I have looked and behold a candlestick all of gold with a bowl on top of it and his seven lamps thereon, and seven pipes to the seven lamps, which are upon the top thereof, and two olive trees by it, one upon the right side of the bowl, and the other upon the left side thereof. So I answered and spake to the angel that talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Again, we are covering 
verses 1 to 6, and verses 12 to 14. There is a work for all to do for the master. Every human being who has a vital connection with Christ will earnestly strive to carry forward the work convert, committed to him. <clears throat> but no selfishness can enter God's service. The most splendid service, if it originates with self, is useless. Unless the root is holy, no fruit can be born to God's glory. We are to be justified by faith and judged by works. Consider that for a minute. How can we be justified? If we are not justified, can we then become sanctified? If we are not sanctified, can we go to judgment? We have to be justified by faith. We are judged by the works that are done. God's law claims obedience from a few. Right? Well, no. God wants obedience from all. Um, if I understood your question. You so, did understand it. What's that? I said you did understand it. You're right. Now, this thing that we are justified by faith and judged by works um, is, I, I understand it in a way that that we are justified by faith. That is, we are saved by faith. Right. But if we put our works as what God is to save us by, we will be judged by our works, that is, the wicked are judged by their works, but the righteous are judged by their faith or saved by faith. So, um, at least that's how I understand it here. So, I mean, God does claim obedience from all and contempt condemns disobedience. So, we are all all are disobedient. If we were to be judged by our works. We would be condemned, right? Correct. Right. So in order to be saved, we have to be saved by God's grace through faith. There's no way that we could be saved by our works. Because our entire life would have to be taken into account. Not just, you know, the last moment of our life for the last few years or even chosen moments. Um because salvation is by grace through faith. But the wicked are judged by works. And every time you see it, you know, that they're condemned by their works or judged by their works or by their words, it's always the wicked that are judged by their works. But the righteous can't be judged by their works. Because if we look at our works, they're imperfect. So we have to be justified made righteous by faith. Now, of course, that faith will work, right? It will change our life, but we're still never judged by our works. Hopefully that's clear. Is this right. not identifying two classes? Yes. Yeah, so two those that are justified by faith and those that are judged by works. Those God that are justified from all and condemns disobedience. Two classes. So here we have God's law. We have those that will be obedient and those that will not be obedient. One standing under the blood ba the blood stained banner of Prince Emmanuel, and one standing under the black banner of the great apostate. There is no middle ground. There is none of this. I'm a good person. 
without total obedience. So here again, she is identifying for us very clearly the obligation that we have. The Lord has a people on the earth who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. He has his thousands who have not bowed the knee to Baal. Such will stand on Mount Zion, but first they must stand on earth girded with the whole armor, ready to engage in the work of saving those who are ready to perish, hunting for lost sheep. Heavenly angels conduct this search. And spiritual activity is demanded of all who believe present truth, that they may join the angels in their work. So spiritual activity is demanded of all of us, right? Because right. if you're here today, you are believing in present truth. Is that not correct? Absolutely. Amen. The oil with which the wise virgins filled their lamps represents the Holy Spirit. Here again, Mrs. White repeats Zechariah 4, 1 to 14. The anointed ones standing by the Lord of the whole earth have the position once given to Satan as covering cherub. Think about that for a second. We've identified in the past one that had taken the place of our adversary. Who is that? Who took Cain? the place? Excuse me? Cain? No. Who took the place in heaven of our adversary. Gabriel. Gabriel. Gabriel is one of the covering cherubs. Gabriel and his compatriot, the anointed one standing by the Lord of the whole earth, are the covering cherubs that are bringing light to our time and for our pathway. By the holy beings surrounding his throne, the Lord keeps up a constant communication with the inhabitants of the earth. The golden oil represents the grace with which God keeps the lamps of believers supplied, that they shall not flicker and go out. Were it not that this holy oil is poured from heaven in the messages of God's spirit, the agencies of evil would have entire control over man. In the studies over these last several weeks, we have been receiving again and again and again evidence that God is yet leading. That the lamps for his believers are being supplied with oil.
We are also being shown, we are being told from this particular document that were it not that this holy oil is poured from heaven in the messages of God's spirit, the agencies of evil would have entire control over men. What does it mean to have entire control to you? Has God withdrawn his spirit if the oil is continuing to flow? No, not yet. Now, comment from the chat. It is much honor to compare us of earth with the covering cherub Gabriel in heaven. Gabriel, Christ's angel, has received the prophecies that were given by God the Father to Christ, by Christ to Gabriel, by Gabriel to whom? How do we read this? How is this to be read from Revelation 1? I'm sorry for interrupting, but how is this to be read from Revelation 1? Revelation 1, verse 1, the revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him to shew unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. And he sent and signify it by his angel unto his servant, John. If we are truly God's servants, then it is Gabriel that is providing the light at this time. Would you agree? Yes. God is dishonored when we do not receive the communication which he sends us. Thus we refuse the golden oil which he would pour into our souls to be communicated to those in darkness. Are we willing to dishonor God? Are we choosing to refuse the golden oil? When the call shall come, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. Those who have not received the holy oil, who have not cherished the grace of Christ in their hearts, will find like the foolish virgins that they are not ready to meet their Lord. They have not in themselves the power to obtain the oil, and their lives are wrecked. But if God's Holy Spirit is asked for, if we plead as did Moses, show me thy glory. The love of God <clears throat> will be shed abroad in our hearts. Through the golden pipes, the golden oil will be communicated to us. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. By receiving the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness, God's children shine as lights in the world now not only should we be seeing this from the review and herald 20th of july 1897 but also from february 3rd 1903 review and herald sister white repeated this to help people understand how serious the time has been.
Be careful. Take heed. You are to let God in. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If we refuse to answer the door, if we refuse to seek the oil of his character, are we letting God entrance? Are we allowing this entrance into our soul? No, we aren't. He will make his combinations and his arrangements. God has need of men of intense spiritual life. How are we prepared to do the work for our time? The Lord has declared the source of the strength of his people. Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Here we are to compare Zechariah 4, 6 with Zechariah 4, 10 to 14. The Lord's people are to be one. What does this mean to you? That we should have unity as God's people. Exactly. There is to be no separation in his work. There is not to be a dividing where one goes off to the right, another goes off to the left. We are to be as unified as an army. Too much time and means is being absorbed in a work which is being carried forward too earnestly in one direction. Are we to preach the law, the law, until we are as dry as the hills of Gilboa? No, we are told not to do so. Was this not the point that we found our spiritual forefathers entering into in 1886 and 1888? The Lord has not appointed this. He has not appointed us to go earnestly in only one direction. We are not here to decide to go onto the right or to the left. Are we to have a division in the gospel message? Are we to have the right arm of the gospel? separated from the body. No, sir. He sent out the 12 apostles and afterward the 70 to preach the word to the people. Was Judas one of the 12 that was sent out? Yes, he was. The news of the kingdom of God was preached, and power was given to them to heal the sick and cast out devils, because their word, their work, was done in the name of Jesus. The two influences must not be separated. God's commandment-keeping people must be one. Satan will invent every device to break up and separate those whom God is seeking to make one. But the Lord will reveal himself as a God of judgment. We are at this time working under the eyes of the heavenly host. There is a watcher in our midst inspecting all that is planned and carried out.
We may go all over the world full of the talk of the word and yet keep Christ out of the heart. That's a fearsome thought. The truth is kept in the outer court and Christ meets us with the words, friend, how camest thou in hither without the wedding garment? The voice may even utter the highest oracles of God's word. Yet the men may not have put on the wedding garment. They are building on a sandy foundation. Hearers of the word. They come to the banquet. But they have not put on the robe of Christ's righteousness. The work of the Holy Spirit is to them a strange work. They are not doers of the word. The living oracles are not their guide and their directory. How else do you see this? Are we to hear the word and refuse the robe? What was Christ's admonition to his followers that caused many to walk no more with him? They need to eat his flesh and drink his blood. They need to stay in his word and hearing from him and beseeching him to fill us with his spirit daily. Did those that walked no more with him, except his robe of righteousness. No, they didn't. They threw it off if they had ever had it. We are to study as never before the parable of the ten virgins. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. The wise took oil in their lamps. This is the oil, this is the holy oil represented in Zechariah. Here again, Zechariah 4, 11 to 14 is repeated. This representation is of the highest consequence to those who claim to know the truth. So if we claim to know the truth, we're going to understand this passage. And I answered again and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, What be these two olive branches, which through the two golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered me and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, these are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole host of the whole earth. But if we do not practice the truth, if we have not received the holy oil, which the two golden pipes empty out of themselves, the oil is received into vessels prepared for the oil. The Holy Spirit is received into hearts which are prepared for it. It is the Holy Spirit in the heart which works by love and purifies the soul. Amen. Here again. The Holy Spirit cannot abide where there is a single spot or wrinkle. The Holy Spirit cannot live where sin is in control.
Therefore, those that are praying for the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, because their vessels are not prepared, are praying for their own destruction. We must have greater confidence and earnestness in practicing a thus saith the Lord. We are not to listen to any voice that will benumb our senses in regard to the white garment of character that we must put on. There is to be no party spirit. We are to be unified with God and with one another. Then the prayer of faith will heal the sick. Many times, many have asked the question that if this is according to God's will, why are we not able to heal the sick? Why are we not able to perform these miracles as occurred in the time of the early church? We do not have because we do not ask. We do not have because we are not unified. We do not have the oil because we are not prepared for it. Now this next document was written on the 16th day of the seventh month. What would have been going on about the 16th day of the seventh month, according to the biblical calendar? The battle of the battle of tabernacles. I'm sorry, I didn't understand. The battle of tabernacles, or come meeting. We would have tabernacles. We would have the feast of tabernacles going, right? Yes. It would. Have it would be a time of the final feast of God's year, right? With his own blood, Jesus appears in the presence of God as an intercessor for all who call upon his name. He is the advocate in behalf of the guilty. His blood cleanses all from sin who accept him as their personal savior. Is it a sin to break the commandments? Yes, it is. So... In this, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. But yet there are those that are willing to be cleansed of all sin because they have chosen to accept Christ as their Savior and to follow him wherever he goes, to keep his law and to become every day closer with him. The memorial of his sufferings and death upon the cross, the penalty due to the transgressor, is efficacious for all who believe that this propitiation in the presence of God is a perpetual offering. Christ claims that the provision made entreaties him entitles him to make the assurance to all who seek him. For his sake, the prayers of the penitent who come to him acknowledging Christ as their Savior should be accepted as yea and amen, their sins blotted out, and the holy oil bestowed upon them.
acceptance, sins removed, oil bestowed. How many steps is that? Three. And yet we refer to Revelation 14 as what? Three angels messages. Is it also not a three-step prophetic testing message? Right. Acceptance, blotted out, and then the holy oil is is bestowed. Can she can Mrs. White be any more clear than this? Doesn't this show us what our obligation is to accept Christ, to believe that He is capable of blotting out our sins? And then to be prepared to receive the holy oil, the golden oil from above. Then answered I and said unto him, what are these two olive trees upon the right side of the candlestick and upon the left side thereof? And I answered again and said unto him, what be these two olive branches, which through the golden pipes empty the golden oil out of themselves? And he answered and said, Knowest thou not what these be? And I said, No, my Lord. Then said he, These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth. Zechariah 4, 11 to 14. Here the messengers of God are represented by the olive branches which through the golden pipe empty the golden oil out of themselves. This is the heavenly vital communication from God to every soul that is emptied of self. The heavenly oil is communicated to the human agent is to be given to those who are consecrated channels to flow forth from them to others. If you are backbiting, if you are condemning, if you are gossiping, you are not receiving the holy oil. Your heart, your vessel is not prepared to receive this. I was given a message to bear, and it was this, that if those before me would prepare the way for God to work by humbling their hearts before him and confessing their sins and their errors, if they would empty their hearts of everything that was not in harmony with the principles of the truth, the Lord would commission the two olive branches to empty through the two golden pipes the golden oil out of themselves into the vessels of hearts prepared for them. These are the two anointed ones that stand by the Lord of the whole earth, not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. When we take God at his word, when we believe on Christ without doubting, we shall see his Holy Spirit working upon human hearts. When we accept him at his word, when we believe without doubting, we shall see the Holy Spirit working. But when there are contentions and divisions, when those who claim to believe the truth educate their powers of criticism, the Lord cannot work through them to his, name, his own name's glory. 
the web is composed so largely of human threads that the fabric is marred and spoiled. These paragraphs are very telling. Well, what you just read about the web being composed of human threads, it reminds me of, of the story of Samson and Judges 16. Okay. Now, why does it remind you so? Well, he had his hair woven, woven into the, uh, the, the, the fabric. Uh, I guess that symbolizes us trying to do the work of God, but so much of self is woven into it that the whole work is marred. Brothers and sisters, <clears throat> these paragraphs, letter 86 of 1898, are important for our time. We've spoken several times about the need we have to do a church service. We need to be prepared to do something like this. We need to consider carefully what we are saying and what we are doing at this time. Because if we are blocking the way for God to do his work, if we are not humbling our hearts before him, if we are not confessing our sins and our errors, if we will not empty our hearts of everything that is not in harmony with the principles of truth, then God cannot pour out his Holy Spirit. The bride will not make herself ready for the wedding. We do not ma manifest the consecration that we should. We have not learned the lesson of humility and meekness, which is essential for us to learn. We are still on the losing side. Those who teach the truth, as well as those who receive it, have yet to learn the most difficult lesson given to man to learn. They must realize the nothingness of human wisdom. Now, while there is yet time in our meeting today, I want you to consider carefully these passages from letter 86 of 1898. There are many such letters that Mrs. White had provided to others. She is showing us a three-step testing process that runs parallel with the three-step prophetic testing message that we call the gospel, that we find as the messages of Revelation 14. If we're not willing to be consecrated, and this doesn't mean half-hearted, this means completely, Is God then able to give us his spirit? No. And if God is not giving us his spirit, then what spirit are we partaking? The one of the anniversary. Thank you. So we have a choice.
there is only two classes. There is no middle ground. Either we are choosing to follow Christ with our whole heart, with our entire heart, with everything, or we are not. It's a yes or a no. Choose you this day whom you will serve. Is the admonition that was given by Joshua. Choose you today. Are you willing to be prepared to receive the golden oil? Are you willing to be prepared to receive the Holy Spirit? Consider this carefully over this week. We are going to return to these subjects next week. Any thoughts, comments, or questions at this time? It has been so helpful, most so on my side. I really appreciate it. At this point, my brother, I praise God. This is a reason to praise God. Any other thoughts or comments? I love that quote where, where she says, when we take God at his word, when we believe upon Christ without doubting, we shall see his Holy Spirit working upon human hearts. And that includes our own hearts. And I mean, I'm living amidst people who are so ungodly and it's just such a challenge Lord, please help me to manifest your character, your spirit, because sometimes I just want to bash their heads together. What are you doing? Listen to yourself. You know? I'm just praying the Lord convicts them and brings them to repentance because it's like living in hell right now. <laughs> it's really bad. We never know the condition of the ground upon which we will cast seed. We don't know if we're going to be casting our seed upon stony ground. We don't know if we're casting it upon fertile ground. We don't know if we're casting it upon the path where the birds are going to pick from it. Some of that seed is going to fall where it is going to begin to grow. Consider these passages. We will return to this this next week. So let us close in prayer. Loving Father in heaven. We thank you for the words of your prophet showing us our true condition. Help us, Father, so that we may be prepared. Many are undergoing the fires of affliction now. Many are wanting to be removed from the fire before the dross is consumed. Prepare us, Father, Direct us in the steps that you would have us to take. Place us where we should be. Help us so that we may surrender all to you. Guide us now. Be with us in this Sabbath. In all things we ask, we thank you, and we pray. In Jesus' name, amen.